Welcome back to Fate, the Rise of Magnus. The group has been traveling via airship to Ganrock. Now, Ganrock, the primary sort of gigantic uh, gnome city, is underground. As such, there isn't. Uh, th there aren't necessarily a very large amount of entryways into the cave system that connects to Genrock. So we have to see if we can find it. Uh, Clank can be of some assistance because that's where he spent a lot of his uh, earlier days. I guess technically younger days, but he's hasn't really grown any per se. Okay. So let's get. I need some survival checks. Or, okay, I'll give you some options. We can either do survival or perception, whichever one is. Higher for you. That's not even a question. 20, 24 is pretty dang good. Survival or what? Perception. S uh, perception, yeah. Okay. Very good. I got a lot of survival. Yeah. Quetzal. Uh. Yeah. You gonna try either perception or survival? I'm not very good in either of those. Okay, which I want your highest. Uh, I'll do perception. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Well then. I just read your uh, message there, Ryland, and yes, I don't see why you couldn't. Cool. Uh, it's just like a little shoulder dweller. Yeah, he just he's just a little dude. Okay. Well, he or she, I haven't decided. I'll let you know. Okay. Sounds good. <clears throat> With a 24, Kane... I would say that that is sufficient. Um, you actually see from the airship um, there are a handful of caves. Some of them are higher up on the mountain range. And you notice a few that are um, sort of lower to the sort of plains level. But... Uh, So, high or low is kind of your, your options on the entryway paths. Okay. And this is on the side of, uh, it's on the Sartak city side of the mountains, the eastern side of the mountains. You kind of spend a little bit of time flying around the uh, the the sort of Ganrock size, the the biggest mountain peak, and those and that's what you find. Kane, do as you will okay. with that information. I recommend the the high route. Okay because it's always better to have the, the high ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. 
So it is. Everyone go with that? Yeah. Good. Very good. You kind of... So, Krishna takes the ship down. Low enough that you can drop the ladder down so everyone can kind of climb onto a uh, sort of plateau-type landing. Uh, that just kind of juts out by the cave entrance. You wait for the two minutes it takes for the ship to return to its small size. And who is carrying the ship? Probably Krishna. Okay. I figured he always kind of carried it around. Well, Plank did in the past. He can put it in one of his internal compartments. I'd be fine with that, but he'd probably try to give it away. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Krishna carries a small ship, and the group enters the cave. What do you have by way of light sources? My bird eyes. Do you have dark vision? Uh, the belted dwarven con, so it's. Oh yes, you do. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure I I have that with class feature, right? You should, yeah. I have my yeah. shadow eyes. Uh, I have devil's. You have what? Devil sight. Okay. I awesome. can see in all types of darkness, including magic. I don't know if Clank has dark vision. But I think he actually does. Just because he's a robot. But I'm not sure. I'll check his character sheet real quick. No, I can't. I will check his character sheet. Check his character sheet then. Hey, check out the character sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> I went through that he has it's either not on here or he does not actually have dark vision which is fine this makes it a little bit challenging a little harder to sneak around Unless, you know, because you need a light source. Or, and this would probably be what he does, um, he's going to use reduce on himself. So he shrinks down to about, uh, you know, 12 inches tall or so. And he will, he'll ride with somebody. He'll probably, uh, Sam Rao with Krishna. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll climb on back and we'll be off. He'll hop into Krishna's uh, satchel or something and then we're off. The Underdark is not a friendly place. You all know this as adventurers, although maybe some of you have not actually been to the Underdark at any point. That's an interesting point, in, or sort of question, actually. Um, would any of you have had any experience in the Underdark? I have. Uh, Quetzal's probably read about it, but I don't think that he's ever been there. That's where my slate came from. Hmm. That's I'm, a, I'm a learned bird, but I spent most of my time in castles and big cities. 
Plank, of course, is relatively familiar as well because uh, he had to traverse through the Underdark to get out of Ganrot the first time, at any rate. Um, traveling through the Underdark is not, as, uh, it's also, I should say, not a particularly fast process because it's easy to get a bit turned around. the labyrinthine caves of the Underdark. So, does anyone have the... What is that feat that lets you um, always know what direction is north? Is that alert? Uh, or observant? I forget which one it is. It's one oh, of I'm not sure. Where is my player's hand? Actually, I can just search right now. Uh, not alert. Feats. That's weird. Why well, is it only come up with grappler? I don't know. Maybe we don't have the full. Maybe it's because we don't have the full edition, so to speak. Maybe. Let me check over here on my end and see what I've got. Well, that's odd. And frustrating. Come on, SRD. Why you gotta be rude like that? Okay, let's see. I mean, D &D I definitely don't have what whatever it is. Beats, yeah. I'm just curious about what it is. Beat that lets you always look for no direction. I don't think any of you have it. I'm just curious. Keen mind. No. Well, oh, it's keen mind, I think. Yeah. It's commonly used. It's, it's a common feat for wizards and uh, sort of intelligence based classes. One of those things where, like, you can, you have, it's, it's like a Id eidetic memory kind of thing. For the past month is what it says. Yeah. Which is, in truth, quite handy at times. But, alas. Uh, it is... And this is, this is something that those of you who have been in the Underdark would know. Um, but having a compass, and some of you may have one, but it doesn't exactly always work like it should down there. It'll fool you. So most, most folks that go down there don't bother with compasses. <clears throat> so I need, for purposes of Navigating the Underdark. Let's see, what kind of DC do I want that to be? Should, it's not gonna be crazy hard. Let's get some survival checks. Everybody. I will roll a cooking check. Cooking? Oh, never mind. I got 19 months survival. Dang, dude, that's good. You get plus zero. <laughs> yeah. You rolled a 19, that's awesome. Hey, 15. It's better than I was expecting. I got it. 18. Yay. 15, 18. Uh, sure, please. Ice. Uh, yes, a little. All right. With a 19 and an 18, uh, that's very good. So... Quetzal, you utilize memories of things you've read about the Underdark 
and kind of the way that uh, uh, it sort of explains how to navigate them. And Ryland, of course, you've been in the Underdark before. So it's, it's not necessarily that there's a pattern, per se, but it is... Oh, you're still eating. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, it is... Uh, there, there are common themes that seem to help with navigation through it. So you make your way successfully through a good chunk uh, of Underdark Caves the first day that you're traveling. Um, you don't encounter too much by way of hostile creatures, but you do on occasion find the odd slain monster. Interesting. Yes. Um, they appear to have been uh, with with uh, it's a low enough medicine kind of check that I won't even make anybody roll for it. Very easy to see that these creatures have been uh, decimated by very sharp. So it's it's actually now it's gonna be something else. Uh, now that I think about it, they are cut up and shredded, almost. But and this is the strange part: the areas where the cuts are made appear to be burned as well but it seems to be isolated to the cuts uh, your slate Ryland okay has information on this okay um, the gnomes of Ganrock in patrolling the areas around the city utilize machines that they call magic enhancing constructs or Me mech okay and one of the not 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 all mechs have the same weapon loadout per se but quite a few of them have uh, energy-based uh, fire sort of burning swords. And that's kind of what, it's kind of the gist of what you, you get from, from that. Uh, so either they are patrolling out further than you would expect them to, or you're getting pretty close to the city. Uh, the Am first, I going to be able to know which one it is, though? <laughs> not necessarily. Uh, okay. Not not just yet. You are making progress, and you, given the fact that you encountered some of these creatures that have been killed in this way, uh, you have made the correct progress. Like it, it, it. You can determine that you are going in the right direction. You're just okay. not far enough yet, of course. Uh, who is taking the watches for the night, if you even do that? Uh, we don't have, have anybody to... that... We'll make the robot do it. I like it. Clank? It doesn't need... Wait, the robot can't see in the dark, guys. That's fine. You can hear. <laughs> okay. He also doesn't need to sleep. This is where he, we got. He does have to power down for four hours. I don't care about his well-being. Krishna can watch. <laughs> yes, Krishna will will take. We'll say that Krishna takes the first watch. Um, and I guess Clank can be a part of that. 
Who is taking... Okay. Let's back up a little bit. How many watches are you having? And who is doing which one? Two or three, right? Yeah, two or three. Yeah, typically... If it's two, what is it? Four hours each? Yeah. If it's three, you cut it down a little Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, good. Who has second watch? Uh, Kane. I, I, I guess Quetzal will take it with Kane. Okay, let's get from both of you. Uh, roll d20s for me. Okay. Oof. <laughs> okay. Give me perception checks, both of you. Very nice. Very, very nice. I'll be right back. Give me just a quick second. <coughs> you guys are about to interrupt my sleep. Huh? Sounds like a lot of work over there. <laughs> yeah, I just had to step. Ooh, wait, there's one more thing I need, actually. Ah! <laughs> I'm dropping stuff. <laughs> okay. Jeff, sounds like you need a deck saving turn, maybe? Sounds like you failed his. Jeff.
All right. Kane. Yes. You are the first to see this creature approach. I see what? Before that, though, before you see this creature, you hear a bit of Laughter. Uh, it's female laughter, like uh, almost playful, but it's because it's because it's uh, because it is coming from the darkness. It's a little creepy. <laughs> and then a woman steps out from a woman steps out from behind one of the caves or one of the pathways um, from your camp area. And she is, she's not pale of skin like a death elf. She's tan. Uh, she has long, long black hair. And is insanely beautiful. Like, unnaturally beautiful. I do not trust it. We got, got it Sucky almost boost. hurts to look upon her. Shit. Scuttlebutt. That's how picture really is. She uh, she approaches. I'm assuming that you do not have any sort of campfires or anything like that. Oh no, gosh no. So she approaches, um, she does give off a faint glow herself. And her eyes. Can't trust, trust those shiny bitches. Are also bright in, in there. You don't see, you don't actually see any pupils. It's just white, and it glows. Um, Great. And she says, "Can you come in? Come forth." Do I n know what this might be? Give me a. Nature. Well, no. Let's see. What would this be? Necessarily be nature. Could be, I guess. Could be nature. Uh, could be history, perhaps. Um, Ooh. Arcana. So I don't, I don't see this chick. Um, as she approaches, yes, the glow becomes quite obvious. Uh, and you look to see her, and you too are quite stunned by her beauty. Even though she appears to be human, uh, she is... 25 on Arcana. Nice. Quetzal. One of the books that you've read in your past mention... Creatures, fey or fairy creatures that are so, uh, at least rumored anyway, to be so beautiful that their very touch will burn you. 
They this bitch gonna eat us. They are literally super hot. <laughs> uh, worth it? <laughs> so like Rogue from X-Men basically? Necessarily, like s steal your power, Necess like per se. It it doesn't work like that. Um, they just do uh, nasty fire damage. What up, girl? So the rest of us are asleep while this is happening. Yes. She cool. is ignoring the sleeping people and is only focused on the two <coughs> of you. She beckons. I'm, I'm ever so lonely. Quetzal, what is this thing? Come here. Let me feel you. Uh, it's a hot chick, obviously. <laughs> I mean, how often does this happen? You get an opportunity like this? It doesn't. That's the point. Hmm. Actually, yeah. you know what? Go nuts. Have at it. You first, my man. Can I try to uh, figure out what she wants? Like, insight? Yeah. She's, by the way, she's walking slowly. 19. Like it's not a very fast-paced walk. She is continuously walking toward you. Uh, no, dang. You get plus zero on your inside. <laughs> yeah. That's, that... that's a dang good roll, dude. You are rolling well. Am I able to inside, or can I assist him in his roll? Uh, you can roll on yourself, or you can assist him and give him advantage. Either way. I will roll mine, because I don't think he's going to do much better than that. Fair. All right. Not I'm not going to do better than that either. All right. I'm going to continue to sleep <clears throat> comfortably. She seems to legitimately want to touch you. To uh, uh huh. I think I need an adult. Yeah. I am an adult. Well, Kane, uh, Eiffel Tower? <laughs> <laughs> Yo Yola? She gets within about 10 feet of Quetzal. Whoa there, lady. Because, you know, again, she's, she's, it's very, it's not hasty. She is walking ever so slowly toward you. How far from the sleeping people is she? Um, well, <laughs> dude, uh, she is, she's, uh, probably 15, 20 feet away from the sleeping people. But okay, again, so we wouldn't in, notice it. She's not in any way focused. Um, uh, if you're asleep and would like to do this, um, roll... Reception checks with disadvantage. Reception with disadvantage? Yeah, because you were asleep. My bad. Natural 20. That was, a, that was yeah. nature, though. Well, it doesn't matter. You can just add three because your perception okay, plus three. So I'll take the three. I guess or I'll, I'll take the eighteen. Oh then. no! It it uh. Right. It would be eighteen. Yeah, because you rolled yeah. twice. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to poke the buttons on an iPad. It is. That's <laughs> that's true. All right. So with an eighteen, I would say, given that she does give off light, that uh, that you would. It, it would probably wake you up at this point. Okay. 
Uh, point of interest, she is wearing uh, gloves that sort of become sleeves that end about mid upper arm and she's wearing a uh, belt that has <coughs> a long claw and nothing else and nothing else really huh yeah she has no top okay so i'm awake mm -hmm. yeah you see this insanely hot glowing chick walking toward quetzal and oh, I'm going to continue to pretend to be asleep, though. Beckoning, okay. Yeah. Beckoning for uh, for him to come to her. It Take the robot. It, it isn't, by the way, it's not trying to charm you. Like, there's no charm magic or anything like that happening. Um But she is. She stops actually about 10 feet away from you. And she pulls her arms back to herself and says, You don't think I'm beautiful? Why won't you come? Uh. Yeah, you're, you're pretty hot, but uh, I know what you are. Um, her, her voice gets deeper and louder. She says, and this, this will wake everybody up at this point. She says, uh, why won't you come to me? Well, like I said, I know what you are. You'll hurt me. Quetzal. Quetzal what is I'm a fragile young bird. I need you, Quetzal. To give me a charisma saving throw. Ah, excellent. Because I have resistant to charm, resistance to charm effects that require sound. Hmm? I have resistance to, to charm effects that require sound if this is a charm effect. It is not Shit. a charm effect. Well, I have failed. Oh, that's a bummer. Intimidation. That's a five. No. Um, this is known as blinding gaze. Her eyes flare with brightness as you look upon her. And your sight goes away. You are blind. This is a problem. And I need everyone to roll initiative you <laughs> you rolled a two okay rylan neat huh that's a neat yeah What did you say she did to him? Blinding gaze. It's an ability that she has. Uh, he is blind. Does it qualify as a spell or is it just an ability? It is not a spell. Okay. No counter spell. No counter spell. Nerp. Nerp, nerp, nerp. Okay, let's see. What shall. Ooh, okay. Ooh. D20. Oh, fun. What? Yeah. Yeah, really. DM rolls a one. That's handy for you guys. Uh, In... I need to... That might be a pun. Get Krishna's. Maybe do that. Just click this right there. Okay. And then... Well, wait, what are those rolls here? That's okay. I didn't, I just needed to uh, get the numbers. So 
first one was called Krishna, which is a six. <laughs> Unfortunate. And for Plank, it is 13, which matches Quetzal's. Top of the round, we have Quetzal and Clank. Since I don't have a cave system in Roll20, we're just going to do some theater of the mind to combat. I hope that's okay. Okay. I can you're, dig in, it. you're in a clearing that is approximately uh, 20 feet Cross and maybe 30 feet long and there are several different caves that are pathways that shoot out from it at least three if not more okay well I can't see shit so I'm not going to be running down the cave pathways well Quetzal it is your turn. Okay. So is this crazy bitch still in front of me? At least that I know of. Oh, yes. And she is very angry that you did not. Uh, how, how far away from me is she? Ten feet. Okay. I'm going to walk up five feet and try to stab the shit out of her with my sword thing. I guess that's a miss. The 10 will be a miss, yes. I'll probably have disadvantage anyway, right? Because you cause you can't see? Yeah. Because you don't have dark vision? I thought you did. I'm blind. Oh, that's right. You're blind. Yes, you would have disadvantage. But that misses anyway. Ugh. And you're that's a light. 1. <laughs> yes. Give me a... Uh, I got it. That what you got there? Sixty. Sixty-six. Okay. Not a critical failure, but you definitely swing wildly and hit nothing. Clank is going to. He has a crossbow. Oh no, he's just gonna he's gonna use <laughs> he's gonna use his uh, what he calls special beam cannon, which is yes, his magic missile hands. He's gonna fire <coughs> all six. Pew pew and pew. Eighteen damage. He deals eighteen damage. 
for this lady. Seemingly from nowhere because he is still <laughs> tiny. Like from Krishna's pouch. <laughs> pew, hey. pew, pew. John, did we say we knew what this was? Um, it is called... Um, Quetzal would, would know from his reading um, what it's called. I don't know if any of you would know necessarily what it is. Uh, other than it, it is obviously a fey creature. Uh, it's called an abominable beauty. Freaking fairies. Very jealous creature. Very jealous creature. All right. Ryland, you're up. You um, see, uh, bright magic right. missile shoot out from Krishna. Krishna's side and strike the hot fey lady. Neat. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Eldritch I'm, I'm a... Plan. I'm assuming she didn't like getting. No, no, oh, she did no. not. Her, her, uh, the rage is stronger in yeah. her face than it was before from being rejected. Neat. Mm -hmm. um, let's cast. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cast Blight. Oh, fun. So I have to make a constitution saving throw. Yep. Which is... Oh, how do you do that? Is it GR? Yeah, there it is. Okay. What's the DC? I got a 17. Hold on. I think that's enough. Hold on. Which just means half damage. So yeah, I, still not I don't know how to check on the stuff on. Uh, so it's eight plus. Um, is is blight on your character sheet? Huh? No, it, we didn't list it because we were trying to get stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, your your uh your DC is eight plus. Uh, I have it at 15, I think. So you should be good. What's your what's your charisma modifier? Charisma modifier? Yeah. Uh, plus eight. I think it's plus eight. No, that's not right. Four. Plus four. Okay. And proficiency is plus... You're right. It's 15. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She succeeds. Neat. How do I roll, roll that? Roll uh, 8d8. I don't know how to do that with the thing. Uh, can you type in the... Yeah, hold on. I got it. In the chat. That's that's a fast way to do it. If, if you don't have the spell in your Roll20 app. Got it. Yeah, so 17. Oh, damn, jeez. That's pretty. That's, that's really good for a set of rolls. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Oh, that's a good spell. I will write that down. One of my favorites. In just a moment. 34 out of a max of 8. 17's pretty good damage. Kane, you up, my friend. All right. 
Um, nobody's in melee range for her yet, correct? I am. Yes, Quetzal is. Oh, okay. I thought you. I thought you did a range attack. Perfect. Um, I'm <laughs> going to. I want to shadow step farther back down the hall to get in behind her. Okay. And, and can I, I think, do I get a, do I get a free stealth check whenever coming out of that? Um, does think, it say that you do? I think so. I don't have the paper in front of me. I think it's whenever I end a dim or low light. I got it right over here. You alright over there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah, if I land in dim light or darkness, I gain a stealth check as a free action. Oh, great. Okay. And considering we're in pitch black. Oh. It's clear. Yeah, he probably stealth. 23 is good stealth, but let me see. <laughs> That's some good stuff you got there, sir. Let me see <laughs> if it works. I rolled a natural 20, but that just means you don't have advantage on the roll. Uh, not necessarily that. Uh, you would still get sneak attack if you hit. You just don't have advantage on the roll. You with me, Kane? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Roll to see if you see. Hmm? Were you rolling to see if you saw me? Yes. I rolled a natural 20. Oh. Plus her perception skill, which is not unreasonable. So, you are... Uh, she knows you're there, but you because Quetzal's there, you would still get sneak attack damage if you hit. You just don't have advantage on the attack roll. That's all. Alrighty. Alrighty. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to shoot her. Ooh, okay. With both attacks that I get. Okay. Uh, just dump, dump a bunch of damages. Ooh, huh. dang, dude. <laughs> nice. Those both hit. Woot! Now, and obviously, stuff. you only get one sneak attack set, but that's yeah. okay. Wow. All right. How rude. Uh, All boo. right. So, the Do first the hit. Stack. Yeah, I know. That's unfortunate, but that's okay. Uh, so you do 30 plus 17. Holy crap. Is that? Yeah, plus 11. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, the, yeah, the 11 is the plus 10 from sharpshooter. And plus, plus one for, one the, for the weapon. Plus one weapon. Okay, so okay. you do 47 damage. Woo. And this is with the bow, right? Yes, that's with my penumbra bow. Shadow bow. Gracious. That's crazy pants. Uh, I'm just going to put that up here. <clears throat> nice. Uh, two arrows fly. And <clears throat> she flinches as though she's been hit. But because it's so dark, you really don't see the arrows until there's the contrast of her glowing body. To sort of notice that because the arrows that he fires are actually made of shadow stuff. 
So they're very difficult to see in shadow. Yeah. Yeah, a little hard to see shadow arrows in the dark. Like the old the old method of painting arrows black during night combat. Very useful. Krishna is next. He is not having any of this business. And he is going to step forward and try to strike with his sword. He has a sword, right? Yes. Wow. Okay. Oh, wait. He gets two attacks, right? Right. Yes. Maybe? Yes. As a... Oh, wait. No. Because he's not... Why hasn't Krishna leveled up his character? That's weird. All right. We want to go with that guy. Uh, well, he is a level six paladin. So, yes, he would have a secondary attack. So, next attack will miss, alas. But he moves up. His sword bursts into flame. And he, because that's what he has, he has a flame sword. And he strikes. Now, the fire damage, this attack, much to his... Uh, frustration at any rate um, is not as effective as he thought it was or he, that he thought it should be because the fire does not seem to affect this creature there's no signs of burning not even on the creature's clothing as the sword sort of passes through that area but she will take 11 damage, at least, which is not insignificant. Ooh, would he want to dump a smite into that? Probably so. Which you can do after you hit, so you would cast that at... But because he's got spells. Ramming smite. Is that right? Second level. Yeah, I guess so. Ramming smite. <laughs> Plus 2d6 damage. This creature's not invisible. It does shed light when he strikes. Uh, so it's plus 2d6 radiant damage. Eleven. Ooh, nice. Okay, great. She, it's her turn now. She's going to attack Quetzal. Bip. She's going to make two slam attacks. Bannable. All right. I'm going to roll these openly so we can see them. Boop. Okay. So, what's, what's your armor class, Quetzal? 22. 22. Mm. All right. So you. Interesting. Okay. So she goes to hit you. 22. Dang. And will not 
successfully do so as far as trying to strike you with sufficient force to deal damage. However, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw because she might still touch you. Okay. Um... Even though she may How does that work from blonde? Because uh, oh right, she gets advantage. Well, I I get advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that I can against that I can see. Right. Nope, can't can't be blonded, so, so that won't okay. work. So. So let me roll two more rolls and see what happens. Okay, gotcha. All right, so the first one. Okay. Why that's, do bad things always happen to good people, right? Right, question. I know, man. That's fair, because you can't see. You would have... Disadvantage. disadvantage. <coughs> Let me just check that to make sure. That makes sense to me. Brian. Either way, it's not good. Uh, nope. You automatically fail any ability check that requires sight. Oh boy. So. Just what you wanted to hear. Yes. I will read this next then. As soon as you're both close enough that you don't see anything touch you. Uh, burning touch. The creature who touches her also takes 8d6 fire damage <laughs> now let's see let's see what that is just for you Quetzal just for you 26 you take 26 points of fire damage as her hand Raises your arm. Okay. You feel and can smell, actually, um, like burning. And it is very intense. Uh, burning feathers is not a particularly pleasant smell. <laughs> uh, by any means. hurts real bad you can't see the wound which might be a blessing in disguise but the top help help round <laughs> doing the bird us squat. back to quetzal actually yeah <laughs> all right uh i guess i'm gonna try to hit her again with my sword thing Eighteen. Eighteen will just barely hit. The elemental is currently fire. Okay. Currently fire. Gotcha. Alright. So she's going to take eleven damages. Nice hit. You feel a satisfying bit of resistance excellent and she uh, call you know she cries out a bit in pain clank is going to do more of the same as he did before <laughs> and fire off his pew pew guns his pew pew magic missile guns one, two, three. All right. Now that is du, du, du. seven, four, du. and six. So that is 17. Okay. Another 17 damages. That is that's now a total of 12 used of the 30 that he has. <coughs> All right. 
Ryland, you're up. Yes. You see okay. a very uh, unfortunate exchange between the two of them, the creature and Quetzal. Uh, Quetzal has a very serious burn on his arm. Let's, uh... I mean, she's hurting pretty good, Bonnie. Yeah, she's hurting pretty yeah. good. You could say that. Uh, let's lob a couple Eldritch Blasts at her. Okay. Are you activating your ability? What is the ability do again? I can't remember. Once per long rest, you can get advantage on Eldritch Blasts. Uh, advantage on the attack? On the attack roll, yeah. Uh, rounds, equal. rounds equal to your charisma modifier. So I'd get four rounds of that? Yeah. Yeah, sure, why not? All right. Your, the, the slate sort of flares with power as you reach out and blast. That's force damage, isn't it? Yep. Uh, you get, ooh. It's the first one, not the second Okay, so you get two, get right? Two. Yeah. You get a natural 20 on the second one, so that's good. Mm -hmm. The first one does not hit. Okay. So again, as a reminder, the uh, uh, critical hits for me, you do the... Uh, whatever the damage dice is, plus whatever you roll. So you don't, like, double your die rolls. Sort of gives it more power. Sorry, hold on. iPad's being a dick. No worries. Uh, how do I do attack on? Eldritch Blast? Can I just click the dialogue on the right? You can just click the the text of Eldritch Blast. And in fact, if you want me to, I can. Like that. Works. Yes. Ooh. 10 plus 1. That's... Okay. That should be max max damage, shouldn't it? Uh, max plus this. So, you roll the 5. Plus the 5. Gives you a lovely 10. Plus... It's a d10, right? So, plus mm -hmm. 10. So, you do... Twenty-two damage. We'll ignore the other one because that was for like the second die roll uh, that we're not doing because we just do maximum. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we're going to do uh, 20, which is very nice. Good. Kane. You, uh, and, that, and that's force damage, right? For, for, for yeah, class. did you say it was max dice damage only? Yes. So Okay, so I don't get the modifier. You don't get the modifier twice. You only get it okay. once. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We will do a bit of the same. Okay. Did we ever figure okay. out what our armor class is? Uh, I hinted at it before, yes. I didn't tell you. 18. 18, okay. Yeah, it's 18. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and said a bit more of the same. Okay. Two sharpshooters. Are you trying to hide? for? No. Okay. I mean, I don't think there's really anywhere to hide for the most part, is there? It's I mean, I would, I, could, I, would, I would like to hide. Can't? May I attempt a, it's a hide bonus action? It's a bonus action, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, yeah. You're good. You have advantage. Yay! Yeah. She doesn't see you hide this time. So then... I'll just go ahead and roll one normal one. Alright, so that was also awful. So yeah. first attack completely misses. No, yeah. actually yeah. switch it to advantage. Second attack. Hits. There we go. That's... 
Yes, sneak attack damages plus sharpshooter damages. Ooh. Yay. Goodness gracious, man. Ooh. It's two sixes and a four. 36. On the sneak attacks. Dang. It's only a three on the D8. Dream's a nasty damage dealer. For sure. sure. This creature is getting really worn down, and uh, the Krishna that is is getting real tired of all this business. He's gonna make two attacks. Bam, bam. Oh my goodness, nineteens, both of them. Jeez, what is happening? Ouch. You guys just like can't miss today. Well, some of you have, but it's like I missed the first one. The 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 average. I also missed the first one. Very high. Yeah. Six damage and could push the creature. Ooh, he's not going to do that though, because that's too loud. Audible crack 300 feet out, and really in the Underdark Caves, it's probably much longer than that. Yeah, it might deafen us. Well, that's not the issue. It's more a problem of. I mean, there's a cave in. Uh, it doesn't do like thunder damage to the surrounding area. It's just very oh, loud. Which will draw in other creatures. So he's going to do another branding swing. Yeah. Alright. Only one, I think. So let's hit and hit. Goodness gracious. Uh, Plus 2d6. Which is absurd. Nine. I'm starting to think that she's not very uh, pretty anymore. No, she's getting pretty jacked up, which is making her quite upset. Twenty-five plus nine is thirty-four. Thirty-four damage. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ignoring the fire damage because she's using the fire, and it's her turn now. Yeah. Who should she attack? Quetzal is probably still the easiest target for her to hit. So I think she will do that. Ooh, wait. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You said your armor class is 22. 22. All right. Okay. Now that's a hit. And that. Let's see. Oh, wait, no. Okay, so it's, it's with advantage. So the first one's a hit for sure. Let's see about the second one. Ooh, two hits. Yeah. Quetzal, question. Uh, how many hit points how do you want have? To... How many hit points do I have? Yeah. 74. 74, okay. <laughs> how would you like? No, no. <laughs> how would you like to die?
So with two hits, I'm just going to combine all this together so it's a singular chunk of missness. Plus, uh, ooh, no. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's amazing. Okay, Quetzal. Bear in mind, each slam is effectively the same kind of damage as a fireball. So, you take a total. You're not resistant to any damage, are you? Nope. Okay. Uh, that time to roll a wizard. Pain. You take a total. This is how you get a wizard. 67 damage. <laughs> Not all of it's fire, some of it, a small portion of it. Uh, seven plus six, 13 points of it are uh, bludgeoning as she strikes you. And you're down to okay. seven. seven hit points. <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> That's ridiculous and awesome. Uh, that's the lowest I've ever gotten anybody in a long time, actually. Quetzal, you are up and probably not feeling real good. A little crispy. Feel a little crispy, like a little fried chicken here. Yeah. <laughs> her, like her second strike, when she hits you, she kind of like palms you in the chest. It's like a burnt, charred handprint on your chest. Alright, well, I am going to, uh, uh, I'm fucked, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just, uh, try to die. hit her again, okay. <laughs> or die. Okay. You know, one of those two. Let's, let's uh, see it, let's see it, my friend. I'm gonna hit her with my spoon this time. Okay. Wow, that's a nice. Hit. That's wild. Okay. Damn it. Five. Budgeting. Do you only get one attack? Yeah. Okay. Five damages. Question, Quetzal. Would you like to roll me a percentile dice? Just real quick. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Clank is going to use another six charges. So he'll have essentially two more rounds, so to speak, of shocks. Oh, where is that thing at? I need to find it. I need to find it. Be quick. One, two, three. Some handy tool he has in there. Another 17. Wow. He has done 17 damage with this almost every time he's used it at least today model of consistency there agreed very nice man she is like breathing heavy she's got all kinds of she has shadow arrows sticking in her cuts and some radiant, some signs of radiant damage. Uh, Ryland, it's your turn. Uh, check a couple Eldritch Blasts. Eldritch Blasts, all right. I still have advantage on those, right? You do, for another three, three rounds. rounds, including this one, yes. Hit. Hit. Neat. 
Yes. Tasty. I think you only have to click it once because it's gonna. Uh, nope. I think you have to do it twice. I'm sorry. Yeah. You have to do it. You do it hit twice. All right. Twenty damage. Twenty damage. So now we're here. Uh, describe to me how the Eldritch Blasts kill this hot lady. Uh, Eldritch Blast is force damage, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna explode her head. Hmm. Fun. You, you cast two. As her head. Explodes. Yeah, I, I kind of like what Corey just described here for me. Since I cast two, I did it with either. With what? And the two force blasts meet in the middle and crush her head. <laughs> okay. I like that, Corey. I like that a lot. Squish. Thank you. Very, Thank you very much. Very like, nice. great. As the great. Eldritch Blast nice. strike both Whee! sides of her head and begin to crush it, kill uh, she unleashes a uh, deafening scream. And I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw. Can we just not? God damn it. No. <laughs> Shit, I don't know. Do I, do I have disadvantage on this right now? Because I rolled with disadvantage. Uh, no, this is hearing, not sight. Dang, game. Actually, well, even if I get... Go ahead, give me disadvantage. I mean, you're, nice. you're, you're, yeah. We take the front roll anyway, so that's fine. Seven. Okay. Let me roll for. How did she scream though? It was a death scream. It was a split second before she died. Oh, okay. Eldritch blasts don't like. It's not speed of light or anything like that. They're just, you know, upsetting. Uh, constitution. Ooh, okay, that's for Clank. And then for Krishna. Oh no. My. In her death throes and her scream uh, for Ryland and Krishna. After the scream ends, all you can hear after that is a sort of ringing in your ears. <laughs> uh, be some stuff if uh, Bob is deafened as well. You are deaf. Wait, I'm deaf? No, Clank and Ryland. I'm sorry. Did I? No, I'm okay. sorry. Krishna and Ryland. No, I, I said it would be some serious stuff if you if you got deafened on top of being. Yeah, that'd be a little rough. <laughs> yeah. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we're pretty close. Hey, as long as they don't take away your sense of taste, that's all. That's all you really need, <laughs> dude. That's all that, I would need. Be, that would be horrible. Create a creature that's the bane of arcane chefs everywhere. <laughs> oh, GG. Oh. Deafens. I'm making a few quick notes. Well, clap. Yes. And it doesn't seem to be, at least in the immediate aftermath of the combat, um, it does not seem to be fading. The deafness. What about Quetzal's blindness? Uh, the blindness is still going on as well. And in fact, 
this is a good a time as any, I think, to end the session. Uh, because we're at about an hour and a half, which is very good for our, an end time. A little bit prior to that, like five minutes short. Um, your rest was interrupted, so you'll have to kind of repeat it. Um, the second, we'll, we'll kind of stop it after this part. Um, once the uh, once you have an, a sort of official long rest, you find that the deafness is still Very active, still, it's still going on. Uh, the blindness seems to have passed in the night. Excellent. The what? Is... <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, the deafness has not. When you say deaf, do you mean like full deaf or like hard of hearing or like what? It is uh, like you can't you can't hear anything. Whether, and, and I'll kind of leave the interpretation of that up to you as far as whether it's just silence or if it's that sort of tinnitus, annoying, ringing sound. Okay. It's just actual deafness, though. It's not like I can still hear telepathically through the slate. Yeah, and like the slate can display text. And the slate can still hear everything around us, right? Uh. Yeah, yeah, it has a microphone on it. Yeah, the sleep is not, not deaf. Yeah. So, just solve my problem. So, so you, just, you, just have, you just have to read. I got a hearing aid. You got subtitles. <laughs> yeah. So we will we'll stop suddenly there and we'll anime. play again in two weeks. Game really obscure uh, anime. Does anyone have anything going on at that time? Or? Uh, not that see. I know of. Back at work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think next week's fine. Uh, the session at the end of the month is probably I'm, I'm going to be out of town. Okay. I'll be out of town for the next session. I mean, that's, that's Labor 16. Day weekend. For the 16th. Yeah, I'm going to Bristol. Bristol. Right. NASCAR, baby. Gotcha. All right. Which translates to going and making a left turn. Are Are you actually going in, or are you just going out to uh, I haven't decided yet. I might actually go to the race this year. I figure I should probably get a one at some point eventually. Like <laughs> because I remember or something that you want nope. with. Or... Nope. We just go up to uh, let's go up to camp. Anyway, uh, we'll just uh, we will see you all in two weeks, and uh, we'll go ahead and stop the recording here. Later. Uh, later.